difficulties that I can hope we are now streaming this live so that people can be watching it on our locations. We want to welcome everybody and thank you all for coming tonight. This is our very first actual debate that we're holding. And so we are so glad that everybody's come to join us. We are going to start with an invocation and then a pledge of allegiance. And we'll go from there. So Tim Blackburn is going to be one of our planning commissioners is going to give us our invocation and then Eric Bowden, Bowden will be giving us our Pledge of Allegiance. Our Father in Heaven, we are grateful tonight for the opportunity that we have to be here convened in this community event. We are thankful for the privilege we have to live in Vineyard. We're thankful for those who have come, come before and who have prepared this area for our enjoyment. We are grateful for our friends and our neighbors. We're thankful for this city and those who work here to keep our town um, safe and secure and enjoyable for all of us. We are thankful for those, Father in Heaven, who are here tonight to discuss their views of the city, who are willing to give of their time and talents to better our lives here as we live and enjoy this time. We are grateful to live in a free country where we have the opportunity to choose those who will represent us. We are thankful for this great country and those who do so much to protect our freedoms. We ask for thy blessings to be with us tonight, that we will not only hear but feel those things that each of us needs to, to understand to help us make those decisions that will better this community. This we humbly pray and thank thee for in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. to them now for the rest of the remainder of, of our event. Um, I'll let you guys introduce yourself for guests. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. My name is Ron Rawls, and I'm president and CEO of the Utah Valley Chamber. And to my left is John Winker. He is our events director, my colleague. And his darling wife is there in the front row. She is, her name is Kathy. Not darling wife, her name is Kathy. Uh, we'll be running about to she will be running the timer for us this evening. This is our fourth or fifth debate that we've, we've uh, kind of coordinated in for Probe on Orem. So it's, it's an honor to be here to help facilitate this uh, debate this evening. And let's, let's get rolling, shall we? We're going to call the city council members or candidates to the, the podium here. And they will each have two for an opening statement to wow you with their wonderful ideas and their smiling faces. They don't bite, I've met them all. Um, Kathy here in the front, right in front of you, John and ladies. You can see Kathy will give you your sign so that you don't go over time. Because I gotta tell you, I, I've never had one of these for this kind of thing, and I'm not afraid to use it. Just kidding, you're not gonna need it. Uh, once you've finished your two-minute opening statements, then we will roll into the questions that have been provided by staff and residents of, of the New City, and uh, we'll rotate through those questions in a round robin. Each um, candidate will have an opportunity to either start the question or, or respond in rebuttal to um, the previous candidate's response. We'll go through six questions. Each candidate will have the opportunity to start two responses, and then they'll each have one minute for a closing statement. So 
Are we clear, Isma? Good? Okay, and I have also told the candidates that if uh, they don't answer the question, I'm going to ask them to answer the question. I'll push back a little bit so that we get some clear answers instead of smiling cute faces. Fair enough? Okay. Gentlemen, to your positions, please. And the order of um, the process was determined by their order on the ballot, which is a randomized process. We won't bother with it, but we'll just trust that the randomized process of lieutenant governor, governor is true and faithful, right? All right. So, candidate er Ernest. Ernest? Ernest. Ernest. John. <laughs> candidate John. <laughs> That one, yeah. Okay. First candidate. How about that? <laughs> you ready? Two minute begins now. served in that under some great tutelage and 
was able then to be a planning commission member fully, and now I serve as the, the, um, the chairman of the planning commission. So I feel like the background knowledge that I've been able to acquire during that time of our great city is going to be very helpful as we grow, as we start to blossom into that beautiful city that our roots have provided for us now. Some of the key points that I would like to continue with is safety, as John talked about. Um, infrastructure is very important, overpasses, things like that, and growth, controlled growth. And that growth is going to come. You've seen the number of house stops pop up, that commercial is going to come, and we need to be able to control that as it, as it grows and do it the right way. And I feel like I would be the correct and the right person to, to help lead that as, as we move forward in the city. Hello. Uh, thanks for everyone coming for coming, and I actually wish there were even more people. But thank you for, for being here. Um, my name is Kevin Maynard. I've been here for coming up on three years now, and just like Chris, uh, I saw something here, and like like you all have, and it, it's it's been a great place to live. And uh, I've always wanted to get involved in the community, and so I, I've loved attending the the meetings, the planning commission, and the City Council, and I feel like I've, I've learned a lot from those things, and I, I've, uh, I've really grown to feel a part of the community, and, and whether or not I get elected, and I hope I do, I'm, I'm going to continue to be coming to those things, because it's, it's a great, it's a great uh, place to, to get to know what's going on, get involved, get involved in the issues, and some things that I'm really passionate about are uh, the lake. I feel like it's, it's underutilized, and I really want to make it a place that that we, we use more. It's one of the best parts of this area. Uh, business development, um, that's huge. I want to make sure we get the right businesses in here that attract uh, the, right, the right people as well. Um, transportation, with how fast we're growing, it's going to be really important to make sure that we get the structure in place to take care of it. And uh, I'm excited to talk about the issues tonight. Thank you. John, you ready for your first question? Okay. So we we'll start with Chris. Ready. Correct? Okay. First question. Uh, you identified several of the issues that are facing Vineyard. Pick one, because you have one minute to respond, that you think is the priority for Vineyard to address as soon as you take office, if you take office. Thank you. The, the one issue that I would like to continue to see move forward is transportation and growth. Uh, and I think those go hand in hand. I think they are one issue. As we grow, we are gonna need transportation. As you've seen all the housetops in our, our city, there's a lot of cars. You've seen a lot of apartments go up. I can tell you each one of those students that's living three per bedroom or two per bedroom all have a car. So what I think is very important is to continue the growth with our front runner station in our downtown town center, which has been master plan. There's footings already in the ground. UTA's already got those in. So we need to look to that growth because that is going to continue to move forward as we grow as a city. It's already there and so we need to plan that front runner station so that we can control who's coming in and who's going out. We need to be Same question. All right. You're number one. Cool. Uh, there's three. Uh, there's three things that we are looking at that we have funding for that we're looking at developing uh, the rail spur, the uh, overpass on Center Street, uh, and then the uh, the um, front runner station. And so, my I think the most important thing is deciding which one of those three that we should do. And uh, I would agree that the front runner station is. Or the spur is probably on the top of my list because that's going to bring business development in here. On top of that, I would say uh, making sure that we, uh, with the developers that we're talking with now about the businesses that were coming that are coming in, there's some important um, things such as Walmart and those types of things issues that we need to talk about. Making sure that we don't make the wrong decisions right now with some of those big players, um, and I think that's really important at this at this point in time. So. That'd probably be the, that the the, uh, the rail spur or the uh, front runner, and making sure that we talk to developers and make sure that we get the right businesses in here because there's there's some that come down the pipeline. 
John. So similar, but some, some other points I want to bring up is absolutely the infrastructure that we need to see from a transportation organization standpoint. So all of this land that we want to see developed in the right ways can happen is essential. As far as what my, one of my number one things I really want to see happen, and I have a few of them, but I'm going to, uh, number one is that we need to make sure that we're getting in the right kind of commercial enterprise that meets the codes, style, feel that we want for venue. That's really important that we get the right kind of, kind of commercial enterprise because if we don't, if that doesn't start becoming a part of it, what we're going to run into is we're going to run into a situation where all of the costs of our, of everything, falls on you and me, the homeowners. And there's cities, Mapleton, Woodland Hills, they have the highest property taxes for a reason. There is almost no commercial representation in those places. So we have to start, we have a lot of homes, a lot of that going in. We need to make sure we kind of hustle so we're not upside down fiscally. Thank you. What would you do to achieve a closer working relationship between city council and city staff? So as I, I work for a bank, I manage an office, so I work with the staff. It's very, very crucial to how well our office does. It's very important to trust your staff. You need to hire the correct people that are qualified and, and know what they're doing and rely on their work that they have done. If you can't do that, you're not going to be successful. They won't be successful. And you'll have negative feelings between staff. I have had the opportunity to work with the current staff and see them hired over the past four years as I've worked on the planning commission. We have a good staff. We have a knowledgeable staff. And I feel like I have a very good rapport with them. And I would love to continue to have that in the future with them. I would, just, the question is how can we counsel the staff to get it to go? What would you do? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think, uh, I, I would agree we have a great staff. Um, I think one thing that I would, I would do is try to ensure that, you know, there's not a lot of uh, closed door meetings or anything that kind of goes on outside of the council meetings. Obviously some of that stuff needs to happen, but I think making the majority of the decisions when the staff is present with the council will bring trust with between the staff and the council and it'll it'll bring transparency which i think is important uh, that's what i would say so i think with any work environment i think what makes a work environment special neat or different is going to be the relationships getting to know those who are there on a personal level communicating communication is everything i also think it's the way that we involve everybody in the building. There are so many opportunities as we grow and develop for so many neat activities that not only are fun, but they also will generate revenue. We have a massive area, we have a lake, we have things that we could be doing like races and Ironman, Spartans, marathons. You know, there's creative things we can do like street art days, there's things like citywide scavenger hunts. These are all things that the entire building can wrap their heads around. They can all be a part of that. The more ownership they take over whatever the activity is, and if we can make it fun, we're going to create a really neat environment in that office, which I know, I, I know it's already great over there. You guys are awesome. But there's, there's a lot of ways to make it even more fun and more of that family feel. Because that's what I think a vineyard is. That's Thank you. Okay. Any Thank you start this one up. So, growth. What you gonna do about it? How are you gonna deal with the growth? It's a loaded question. Go. Yes, that's, that's, it is. There's a lot of forms of growth, economic, population uh, growth, which is what I think you're referring to. But um, yeah, it's just getting the infrastructure in place, uh, making sure that an overpass is obviously gonna help with that. Uh, I'm worried about safety with. Uh, the, especially over by the soccer fields, a lot of when I've been out into the community, a lot of people have um, voiced concerns over over that with how much we're growing, how much traffic is over there. So, um, you know, the the vineyard connector, or sorry, the uh, uh, center street overpass will help a lot with that as we build out the town, um, as we do the uh, the uh, front runner station and the rail spur uh, for the light.
light rail, those things will help tremendously when it comes to the growth. So we already have things in place as we hit different population growth points that are going to help a lot with that. Um, the soonest one being the vineyard or the uh, center tree overpass that'll help tremendously with that. So. Thank you. Okay. All right. So growth, it's kind of one of those things. It's a great problem to have. Okay. That's how I want to look at it. Great problem to have. Okay. Um, I think number one for growth is the codes that are in place. One, we have to have them in place, and they have to be as bomb-proof codes as possible. It's probably not a very political term, but bomb-proof codes as much as possible because that's the only way you're going to hold anybody accountable to the standard that we want to see here in Vineyard. That's a huge part of this. The other part of this is once you have the codes, you have to enforce them. And then once you have the codes and enforce them, you can't get too many loopholes because if you do, you know what you end up in? Litigation all over the place. And that's a nightmare for so many cities. So those are the things that have to happen with the growth from a fundamental standpoint. And then with the growth, like Kevin said, we need to see safety, fire, EMS, and I'm uniquely qualified to be interested in a part of that. But my time is done. So uh, the density has been approved. Okay, you've seen it. You're gonna you're gonna see it in the forge. That's right north of the uh, megaplex and the, the town center. I am not in favor of additional density in any of our current agricultural areas down by on the south end of town. I I think that the density you will see up in the town center will be very beneficial for that area because that's where you want your commercial businesses to be, and that's where your transportation will be. That's where the front runner station will be. The hope is that that's where the UTA light rail will be. So that's where the density should be. It shouldn't be down in the residential area or any of, our, of the other agricultural areas right now. Infrastructure is very important. We talked about that. Please fire EMT. We have to get that. We have very good contracts with the county and or on fire right now, but we need to look to the future. We need a fire station. Hopefully John's gonna be there to be our fire chief and that'll be great, right? So hopefully we have that kind of stuff in the future. Hopefully we have the police. Hopefully we have all that so that we can control that density and be safe. <laughs> oh, uh, okay. Last round goes first question, John. And there's It'll kind of probably roll into your closing statement, but I'll, I'll go there anyway. What are you planning to do in your first 100 days in office that the residents would be excited to hear about? So I think the first 100 days, the kind of things that I've been hearing about from the citizens as I go to homes, I talk to people, meet with people, is in the first 100 days, I think what's realistic is probably more of an effort to communicate what the plan is. I don't know that in the first 100 days a lot of the things we've addressed can actually happen in the first 100 days, but what I think can happen is I think we can have a plan, and I think that plan can be laid out. I think it can address a lot of the concerns that are currently we are worried about concerning transportation, traffic, infrastructure, um, what kind of commercial enterprises are we going after, what are we going to do as far as density, what are we going to do as far as growth. These are the kind of things that all have to be addressed, so I think in the first 100 days, a good, solid plan that everyone can find, access, and know about, I think that would be a great start. I think I'm uniquely qualified, strictly in the first 100 days, to get things started because of the knowledge and all the meetings I've been to. There is a plan. We are currently with the Planning Commission revamping the general. We would love it for all of you to come to the Planning Commission meetings as we look at that general plan, because that is the roadmap to our future. That is being revamped. The last time it was revamped was 15 years ago. Can you believe that? So it's very important that as we get through that as a Planning Commission, credit to the Planning Commission members, they're going through it right now. So I think being a part of that general plan, being involved in that process, is the most important thing that we as residents can do in that first 100 days, because that's what will help to show those developers in the future what we expect to see here in the city of Vineyard. I don't want to be a parent, but I think it is really important with a new council and a new mayor, obviously, to 
get your bearings together and, and talk and and uh, get get a plan together. You know, that's there's going to be three new people on the council, which is a big difference. Uh, another thing that I would do, and I'm already kind of starting to do, um, building out different surveys for different things like uh, businesses that people want, restaurants, um, features that, that people want in the community. Uh, I hear Trader Joe's is a piece of cake to get. What was that? I hear Trader Joe's is a piece of cake to get. Yeah. Um, yeah, those types of things. What do people not want? What do people want? And then we're, it, it's, you know, we, we live in a society where it's run by, you know, it's democracy, right? And so if we know what the people want generally, then it's easier to have a plan based on those needs instead of basing a, having a plan and, and putting it you know, down the people's throats, right? So I think it's good to, to do surveys, and that's something that I really want to do and, and see what the people want and go from there. Okay, closing statement goes to start with Chris. Right. Well, thank you for coming tonight. I think this is wonderful. We had I, I was at the last uh, uh, candidate debate two years ago, and we didn't even have half as many people. So I want to thank you, and everyone who's on Facebook, thank you for watching. I want to thank the other candidates, and especially their spouses, because without them, we're nothing. So thank you. As we move forward, Get involved in the city. I, it doesn't matter whether you get involved with the Planning Commission, City Council, RDA meetings, but get involved. Make your voice heard. Many residents have done that, and they've changed this city with just one voice. There's many circumstances and many examples that I can think of that that has happened over the past four years. I look forward to the vote coming up. I hope to get your vote, and together let's make this place better for all of our residents. I mentioned democracy, so obviously uh, it's run by the people, and so we need people to get involved. Obviously, get out and vote, of which is going to be in the mail, so it's as convenient as ever. Just put a stamp on it, circle a couple of things, and send it out. It's not, not too too uh, tough on you. But yeah, get involved. We we want to. Um, we're not going to know. You know, surveys aren't going to gather everybody. We want people to come in and show up to the meetings. There, there's not a lot of people that show up, unfortunately, and so we definitely need more more people there. But most importantly, get out, um, and thank you for everyone coming tonight. Appreciate it. Yeah, I think this kind of ends with, again, kind of why, why choose me over someone else, okay? And I think more than anything, the best thing I have going for me is my wife, Julie, and my boys, Michael, Mac, Mitch, and Mark. Truthfully, if it wasn't for my wife, I don't think I'd have the courage to be up here. This is awful. But I'm up here, and I'm doing the best I can. She is the reason you should vote for me, because she is a rock star, and she helps me understand and, and learn and do and be motivated for all of these amazing things that I might be a little bit hesitant to be a part of. But I'm grateful, and I'm loving it, and I'm really excited to try and be a part of the Vineyard City Council. And I feel like I bring a background that is unique as a paramedic fireman, I feel like I'm balanced and I want the best answer for everybody. So the way I feel about Vineyard is I love it. We're staying here forever. This is home. And I, I really feel like there's nothing that can be thrown at me or the team that you're gonna elect. You guys are gonna elect the team that represents you, okay? I feel like there's nothing that, you, that can be thrown at us that we can't handle, that we can't investigate Kathy, research. Oh, am I done? You showed the one minute, I think it was supposed to be stopped, right? I thought we were doing two minutes. One minute. Two minutes. Did you guys get two minutes? Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt. Oh, it's one minute? I was trying to keep going. If, if they were trying to change. I'm such a good flow going. Now. I'm sorry. I'm really I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Your wife is the coolest, you have the coolest son. I do. You're right. You want to be involved, you're open. Can you just Yo. talk for me? Because you're awesome. I'm trying to move you. No, you're just. I'm running out of time, aren't I? Okay. So, I do appreciate this process. I appreciate learning from everyone. I've been to many homes. I've been to as many things as I can possibly be at. I've also been involved for the last seven years in a lot of unique ways behind the scenes, lots of different meetings, lots of involvement, helping to guide vineyard wherever I can with my expertise. And uh, more than anything, I want to do this. I want to be a part of this city council 
and I would appreciate your vote and I appreciate everyone coming out. Thank you. start with your opening statements. Julie, you get two minutes for your opening statements, and we'll rotate down the road and we'll start with our questions. Are you going to tell me when to start? Start. Okay. Hi, my name is Julie Fulmer. I am so excited to be here. Thank you all for coming. Um, we moved to Vineyard about seven years ago, and we love this city. I have a little boy, and I have two little boys now. My other boy is two months old, so... Um, we've gotten to experience the rich heritage that is in our city and um, just a lot of the growth that's happened and the cool things that are being done in our city. Um, just to talk a little bit about myself, I have built and run several businesses which have given me a lot of experience in money management, negotiations. Okay, that's the heat. Okay. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm losing where I am. And uh, money management, negotiations, and people management skills. I served the city for six years on the city council and on the planning commission. I have been doing this day in and day out and speaking with the people. And I have obtained a lot of experience doing this. I feel like you need to get involved. You need to come to the meetings. You need to understand the zoning and get to know the players in the city to know how to make a difference here. And Vineyard really needs somebody who's been here making a difference day in and day out. I, um, forgive me, I'm like super nervous right now. Um, but what I really want to say is Vineyard needs somebody who has been sitting on the board, uh, board meetings for sustainable growth, for public safety, for transportation, for funding, for environmental um, clean up and those are all things that I've been doing and Vineyard needs somebody who's been experiencing these things who's been in the trenches with the people and who also has the ability to bring in high-end businesses um, technology has the relationships and negotiation experience to make a difference and to uh, make Vineyard a unique and lasting community thank you me next start start we'll go 
First of all, I'd like to thank the uh, Academy here that let us handle this tonight. It's been a great uh, venue for us. But anyway, I'm Mayor Farnworth. I've been mayor for 14 years, and I have been involved in city, uh, may, uh, the city of Vineyard for 20 years in the, the political side. I have, obviously, you can see what's gone on in, in 20 years, those that have been here, and 15 years what you've just seen. I love Vineyard. Not always did love Vineyard, but I love it now. The important thing to know is that, yes, my family's grown, and yes, I want to be here, and yes, I do want to serve, and I'll always serve. Uh, I have been in the trenches. I have been in every ordinance almost in this city I've been involved in. I have been in almost every piece of the development that I've been involved in. And yes, a lot of stuff, and my feet being blamed for that. But I can honestly tell you that there's four other votes that helped me get here. So there's obviously the, the decisions that have been made in this, in this town has been done by the council. I work with my council. I work with the staff. I've been involved with the staff. Started with one recorder. Now we're up to 30 people. So I've really seen the growth. I still feel I need to, to serve. I have projects that need to get done. And so that's why I'm here. Thank you very much. Now does it work? Awesome. Uh, my name is Sean Herring. I am the write-in candidate for Mayor Vineyard. Um, as many of you know, most of you know, I was out of it in the primaries. Um, took it pretty hard, but due to some brilliant people, a lot of great people around me, um, we got back into it. And we got back into it, and as you can see, we're doing it right. Uh, we got out there, we've met with a lot of you people, we've met with a lot of families, um, some amazing families, the coolest kid in the world, Ammon freaking Tucker. And if you don't know Ammon, you should know Ammon. And he is the reason all of us should be running. That is the future of Vineyard, and that is just, you know, just brightens your day. Um, you know, a little bit about my background, uh, I've been working with cities, counties, DOTs, mostly in the state of Utah, across the country, in a few different places. Um, when it comes to transportation concerns, above ground, below ground infrastructure, um, you know, we, I've been the, doing a lot of that. I'm a background in Vineyard City that the other two do, well-known fact. Uh, I've been in this area for two and a half years, Vineyard. Uh, we came from across Geneva and Orem for eight years and brought a whole group of friends with us. Um, and we've been a great neighbor to Randy. I think a great neighbor to Randy. Um, so. I think what you'll see tonight, we all have a lot of the same goals. We want what is best for Vineyard. At the end of the day, that's what we all want. We may have different ideas, um, we may have different thoughts on how that's been going and how it should go in the future. Um, so at the end of the day, I think it's gonna come down to execution. Uh, the execution of these goals, the execution of these plans, the, the overseeing of what's a huge part of Vineyard in that RDA area. Um, so I think that's where, where it's going to come down to is the, the proper execution. I know I can execute that, um, and I appreciate the opportunity to be here tonight, and I look forward to hope to be in your next mayor of Vineyard. Thank you. Question number one begins with Randy. Randy, you've got 14 years in your belt. So the question is, that's not what I meant. As mayor. What is the role of mayor in Vineyard? Well, the role of mayor is only three things, really. Number one, you control agenda. Number two, you're the referee at all meetings. And number three, you represent the town. And that's it. You have one vote, and you have to work with all the council to make all the decisions. The role of the mayor is to make sure that all this comes together. Now, leadership ability comes through practice, I think, and that's what we've been able to do in the last 20 years, is to be able to bring so many different councils together and come up with the product that we have today. You know, we do have our problems. All towns and cities have their problems. The difference is, is how do we make the councils work together so we can move the town forward? And I know there's many issues out there that are still looking at us 
in the face and we're having to work with our councils. None of us are on an island. Excuse me, I'm done. Sean? Thank you. Yeah, it's a second what Randy said. There's, you know, there's several things the mayor can do and should. Um, I think to add to that, the mayor's a voice. I think people look to the mayor, although we are equal, we are one of five votes, but they look to the mayor as a status thing of being the voice. So we gotta be more vocal. We gotta prove to people why Vineyard is the destination Vineyard should be there. And that takes an entire team. So the mayor, in my opinion, is, you know, just, we're a team player. We're gonna kind of put things in motion. Uh, we can kind of assist the staff. Um, you, you know, and getting back to my background, uh, I think I lend itself very well to several aspects at the city. Um, and I think that's what a mayor does. I think the mayor is just there for anybody and everybody, meaning city, staff, and uh, the residents of the Yeah. Thank you. Um, I think the mayor does get to do the things that Randy said. They control the agenda, they provide teamwork and um, counsel with the council. Randy, you should used to be in charge of the administrative staff as well, but we recently got a city manager, and so it's more of a teamwork and it is more of a one-to-one. -one. Um, mayors also go out and they're, like Sean was saying, they are the face of the city, and they go and they talk to our legislators, they meet with several different boards across the state, and they are the voice of the people. It's not just talking to the people and communicating what is happening here, or taking ownership, it's talking to the other entities and creating those partnerships that are going to bring us the money and the businesses and the infrastructure that our city needs. Thank you. Okay, question number two starts with Sean. And it's similar to what we asked the council. Um, what do you believe is the number one priority and project for Vineyard City that needs to be completed as soon as possible. Thank you. Uh, number one by far is going to be transportation, uh, but not just transportation to build roads. I think there's some safety hazards that are going to be happening in Vineyard if we don't get something such as the Center Street overpass. Um, that'd be my number one priority you know, by far. And that may not be the biggest economical benefit to the city, but for safety of the vineyard residents, and especially those that the center over street um, affects, that by far is number one. Um, so in other infrastructure, once we go from there, you look at moving north into uh, the vineyard connector. Um, you look at a couple other options in there, and that's where you're going to really see the, the growth be um, happening there. Um, I had the luxury of walking every square inch of the Anderson Geneva side the last couple days just to get more in detail with that. And we have a lot of work. There's a lot of work there to be done, and I don't even know if we understand the magnitude of that. Um, but, you know, the infrastructure that is going to be taking place there, we probably need to get a start on now, and I'll answer the rest later. <laughs> uh, so, as much as um, there are so many people that live here now, we are bigger than Linden, I believe. And so the traffic and the parking and the infrastructure as far as the overpass is just as important as getting that tax revenue that people like John were saying. We need to get that money in here. And I recently sent out a poll talking about which one of these priorities that we're going to spend this $17 million on is most important. But after talking to a lot of the community and seeing where the, you know, the infrastructure is really dire over there, um, and just looking at the numbers, we should be able to do all three, all four of the projects for the same amount of money. If we negotiate right, if we use the reimbursements correctly, if we contract correctly, so we're meeting all of the city's needs. So that's the front runner, the overpass, the connector, um, one other that I'm forgetting. The rail spur that also has the light rail connection. Thank you. Um, thank you. Well, my job as being the mayor for the last 14 years has been just that. We have got a team around us that has really worked hard in making infrastructure our number one. Because we didn't have any of you here when we got here. We had the ability to have a clean slate. 
we started from a clean slate, had no idea how we were going to make this function and work. But we got a team around us that has worked on that, and we're still working on it. A month ago, we went down to UDOT down in, in, in Fillmore and secured the money for all of those projects. And so we've been working, and it'll be continually a job for us to get the infrastructure in before we start court and more development. It's something that will be ongoing all the time, and we have to balance that with what we're doing with the growth. Thank you. Thank you. Question three starts with Julie. We also talked with the council about incentives to attract that commercial development. What is your stand on using incentives or not? You know, what I'm going to say is going to reflect a lot of what Chris said. The RDA is there to provide cleanup and incentives to bring in the kind of development that will provide tax revenue for our, our residents. And we have a lot of residents. Like I said, there was a demographic study that just came out and we have about 10,500 residents. So. Um, it's, incentiv it's incentivizing the right businesses, and like uh, Chris said, I, I'm not in favor of just putting money in a developer's pocket, but definitely going for infrastructure and incentivizing the right businesses. Uh, companies that put deed limitations, like big entities like Walmart or other places that stop other retail and grocers from coming in, it's very difficult to want to incentivize, and I'm not in favor of it when they're going to stop the other stores from coming in and providing tax revenue to our citizens. But for other businesses that are really good, yeah, I mean, we should clean up. We should try to bring those companies here. Incentives are a two-edged sword. you got to understand. I wish we were, I wish we were the uh, state of Phoenix, because Phoenix does not, I mean, Arizona, they do not incentivize anybody which makes it a fair playing field for everybody to come in. So, say that, we're in the ballpark, we have an RDA, we have to be very careful, and that budget has got a certain budget for everything, for cleanup, for management, for the amount of incentive we can do, and we have to be very careful in how we manage that, to be able to, our, our, our biggest incentive is to clean up Geneva so we attract people to come in. That's what our biggest incentive is. And that's where I feel incentives need to be. But I also understand that sometimes there's something that comes in that might need incentives, such as the, uh, oh, I can't remember the, uh, the what was that? Peter George? No. <laughs> <laughs> the stage stuff. The, no, uh, the, 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 the business we just went after. Amazon, yes. If Amazon came in here, we definitely need some kind of incentive. And I'm going to have a follow-up. Why would you have given Amazon the dough and not someone well, else? Well, number one, we wouldn't give it to them. We would study it. Number two is that if we could land an Amazon, our tax rate would be so flat that we would not ever have to worry about increasing taxes. That's the reason we went after it. Even though a lot of people text and said, you don't have a chance and you know what to get. <laughs> sure. I was probably one of those people that said that, so you're welcome. Um, incentives are, are good. Um, I came from Maricopa Copa County in Phoenix and where I kind of started out in land development. And he's right, everyone's got a level playing field. Um, the issue with some of the incentives that could be given out is once you give one, the next one expects it, the next one expects it, the next one expects it. And you've got to understand which one to go after and which one to incentivize. Um, I'm not a big fan of incentivizing the wrong companies to come in. Uh, we got to get the right companies in and if it fits the shoe, let's do it. So, um, as far as Amazon goes, uh, we are a perfect place for Amazon. Uh, could have been a perfect place for Amazon, could be a perfect place for Amazon in, in three to four years. Um, that uh, sounds great. I think every city should have probably put an application in for it, just to get the name out there. Um, but that is the exact type of company we should be going after once infrastructure is in place for that company. Thank you. Okay, Randy, you're first up. 
question for this round is, let's talk about high density. What is the plan? What would you do if you continued as mayor to manage the high density growth that's happening in Vineyard? Well, I hate to tell people this, but on this part of the track, high density is gone. The ship has sailed. The train's gone down the track. Unless you got some kind of court order to go bulldoze down people's houses, incentives, uh, high density is over here. So we really only have two places in the city that can really start hitting high density. Over at the uh, town center, over by the megaplex, and there's one farm over here that has about 360 acres. So I'm a real, when I started down this track, I was really scared about density. And so I studied it really well. And what I found is that because we're only 3,800 acres, high density has got to be part of our equation. We have to have it. And the reason we have to have it is because if we didn't have any other kind of uh, economic growth in here, we couldn't pay to take care of our city. We have to have those housetops. To, enter, to even get grocery stores to come here, we have to have housetops. Thank you. Yeah, and you know, zones are zoned. We're, we're currently zoned. And there's current master plans, there's everything in place. I think it's what we do with what comes into those zones that's important. Um, for example, mixed use development is considered high density, uh, but mixed use generates more tax revenue than per acre than a Walmart would, would generate. So I think we look at what's coming in. I, I think we can't be afraid of what's coming in as long as it's handled correctly, as long as it's planned correctly. Um, and with that density uh, comes developer accountability. Uh, we've got to get what is rightfully vineyards. We got to get the proper open spaces they come in. We got to get the proper utilities underground. Um, you know, we've got to upsize certain things, sewer water, storm drain. Um, we have an entire lake over there that uh, we need to utilize. And, you know, the density is going to come. It's going to come down to who can manage that properly as it comes in to get what vineyard rightfully deserves. Um, the density is here in this area and like Randy was saying there is a farm to the south that when development starts happening there we have put in a general plan with the right amount of density that we need to keep it down and so it's holding the city council and the mayor accountable to not change that um, zoning to something that's going to bring in high density because developers are going to ask for it. And then it's about, like I said, managing the density that is here. And that involves taking care of the parking, taking care of the infrastructures, getting creative, because even though we do have money to put into our city for infrastructure and things, we have enough people that are here like, like they have in London, and so we have to get creative and not spend money, but create things like free libraries or you know, clean up the lake so we can have little beachfront places so that our, our people that are here now are taken care of as much as the people in the future. Thank you. Ren? No. Sean. Sorry. Sean told me. I just forgot. Cool. Yeah. Uh, okay, Sean, your, the, the next question to kick off this round is um, the, the the growth that is just bearing down on you. How will you manage the growth? Uh, you know, I think we kind of just addressed a lot of that, how we manage the growth. Um, proper planning is, is key. And by proper planning doesn't just mean the, the pretty house or town or apartment or business. Um, we've got to manage it with our road, with, with our infrastructure. Um, we have to manage it with our services such as sewer or water. Um, storm drain, and then we really need to manage it with emergency services. You know, as growth comes in, as, as we get uh, built out, um, and we're running across that now, those are absolutely essential items that we need here in Vineyard. Um, or we're going to run into issues. You bring in the wrong business with the growth, uh, such as a Walmart, you'll see a major increase in crime. You'll see a major increase in traffic. You'll see just increases that are negative to the city, and we have to be able to look far enough in the future to understand how that today is going to affect that. Yeah, I kind of feel like I just said this answer, but um, 
I guess, to elaborate on it. Uh, as far as getting, you know, police, I feel like we've got a really good police force, and a lot of this is educating what we do have right now. And, and then making sure that the services that we do have or that we're going to start building upon, like the fire station property that we have as we start getting to that place where we can bring those services in, um, making sure that they are enforced and paid for properly. So just getting through those stages and then as our city continues to grow, you know, engineer new plans for each community. Go in and say, okay, Le Cheminot, they've got a lot of traffic problems, they've got a lot of parking issues, what do we need to do for this specific community? You know, Sleepy Ridge, they need another exit out. You know, Center Street needs that overpass so that the four south light doesn't fail. Just continuously um, monitoring, watching, educating, and moving forward with that. I look at growth as a great thing because all you're here. When we, when we decided to go down this path, developers develop and they have rights to, and so we have to watch the growth. But the way I've done in my administration, the way I've worked is because I don't look at myself as the sharpest tool in the shed all the time. So I hire people that know this stuff, that is working in the staffs. The staff is one of those things that is a barometer that can come to the council and the mayor and say, look, this is where we need to work. These are the things that are looking bad, or these are the things that are really are doing us a great job. So it's really, even though we're the council and we make decisions, it's the staff that you have that comes to you and says, look, these are the alarming issues we need to watch for and we need to work on those. So I have to hand it out to my staff. They've done a great job. Thank you. Uh, yeah, you started it, right? So now we go to two. No, no, no. I think we're good. You're good. I started. I did five. Yeah, you started that one. We get another question. The last question. And I, I'm sitting here torn. Do I follow the list or do I go out on a limb? Lynn? Camera on a limb. How, as mayor, will you balance the needs of the longtime residents and the newbies coming into the area and balance their needs? Because I'm guessing there's going to be some differences of opinion. How will you, how will you manage that? How will you bring that together? Yeah, that's a great question. I feel like it's something that I have had the opportunity to deal with in a little microcosm of time. I was here when there were 139 people, and now there's 10,500. So there's a lot of people that have been here for 25 years or longer, and they see things a little bit different than the people on the north end who like the density, like the parks, like the trails. Um, one thing that I try to do is I try to communicate with the residents and I try to put out surveys and get to know the people and do like think tanks and see what people think from each area because we all live in our own world and so finding the problems or the things happening in each of the different areas and then bringing the facts from the staff, from other cities back to the people and working through all the solutions, I've been able to come up with uh, scenarios that have worked for everybody in the community. So how do I manage what I've been managing the last 15 years, bringing the new people get together with the old people? I would, I would bargain I haven't seen nothing yet. What was that? I would, I would bargain with you that you ain't seen nothing yet. Well, and I'm feeling that. And as you know, I'm not the greatest Facebooker in the world. And so I realized that, and so I also hired a manager that was a millennial because they understand you guys better than I do. And so what I did is I got a person that takes care of the Facebook stuff, and I got a manager that understands the young, and I'm an old man, so I can get along with Robert Holdaway. 
you see? And these guys. So it, it all comes down to watching your staff and finding the ways to work together. And so far, I think we've mend that pretty well. I think we have a great community. I see it. I see people growing together. I've been out walking, and I'm telling you, people love their communities, their neighborhoods. They always say, we love it here. So I think that that problem that you have in your mind right now is kind of non-existent. I will bite my tongue. Go ahead, Sean. <laughs> um, yeah, um, I'm almost out of here safely, right? <laughs> I think I bypassed millennials somewhere in the last few years. I don't know where that age really is. Um, I'm a fairly young guy at 35, but I'm an old man at heart. You know, I, I love history. I love uh, I love the preservation of history. Um, being the new guy here to Vineyard, I don't know as much of Vineyard history as I should, um, but I want to learn that. I want to see the events. I want to see a growth within that Heritage Committee. Um, I want to see money coming from the city to fund events for that Heritage Committee. So I think events like that bring out the old farts and bring out the young guys <laughs> where we can join together and just have a good time. So, um, but yeah, so I'm a, I'm a big on the events thing. I know it takes a little bit of money, but uh, there's a lot of people here that always go you know, and, and give money for fundraisers. Um, but events, in my opinion, are, are fantastic. There's no better way than to laugh, to eat, to play together in Gammon Park on Saturday the 14th. <laughs> and I need to clarify, I didn't use the word millennial. I said newbie, right? Okay. Newbie. Okay. I didn't imply that it had to be a millennial. Right. That was our last question. Now we have Randy starts with our closing statements. One minute. Go. All right. One of the reasons I feel like you need to keep me as the mayor is because I have relationships with everybody. I've been there long enough that I can call up the governor and talk to him. I grew up with him. I can go with these other people, such so UTA, UDOT, any of these people that I've been dealing with for the last 15 years. When I call them, they call me back. And that's a great asset that I would be, you'd be losing when I go out the door. One of the great things, too, is that I don't have to prove myself. Look around my town. Thank you, Randy. Um, one thing I was telling Randy and Julie before this is that no matter what happens, um, you've seen an increase in awareness. You've seen your voice be heard. Uh, no matter what happens with uh, who gets voted in, Vineyard's better for it. Um, that being said, um, you know, in the last month I've, I've met a lot of you. We've been knocking doors. We've been talking to everybody. Uh, we've registered over 200 voters, a uh, minimum of 200 voters. Um, you see a lot of our signs in there. So we're doing something right. I think we're doing it the right way. Um, I'm very aggressive when it comes to approaching businesses. I'm more proactive than reactive. Um, you know, I want to get in there and see those problems, solve those problems before those problems help, before they come in. Um, so you have a voice. I think one thing through this election process is um, you guys are realizing you do have a voice, and maybe not in the past you haven't. Uh, so you have a voice, each and every one of you. Um, it's time to let your voice be heard. It's time to vibe to uh, write in the right candidate. Thank you. Um, you know, I've been here during the majority of the growth, and I've been attending a lot of the meetings and creating partnerships and meeting people. So I feel like one of the benefits um, that I have is I know a lot of the people also that help bring money and decisions to our city. I've also taken the time to get to know our entire community. So even though it was a small number in the beginning, I have taken the time to go out not only on social media, but I've put my phone number out there and people have called me day and night. And I've put polls out and so I know all of you and the things that you care about. And so I have the experience I know the city, I know the staff, I know the people, and I also have new visions of the future. And I, I work all the time to bring in new businesses and start up new programs. And so I've got momentum rolling. And we wouldn't be starting from someone who hasn't been here, and we do have new visions. So I think that's what I bring to the community that's just a little bit different. Thank 
you. Let me do two things. Let's thank whoever turned the heat on. Feels good. Thank you. Shoot, I like talking. You always tell me to eat it. And thank you to all of the candidates for your willingness to stick it out there and be brave and to represent your community. So let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you guys for coming. If we can have the council candidates and the mayor candidates stay up here for just a second. So, council, come on back up. <coughs> can explain the rest of the evening really quick um, and put in my two cents. Yeah, anybody? Anybody up for a little um, you don't want to see us. dancing? No? Okay. Um, so, I want you to take one more look at everybody. So if you can pan that little live stream around a little bit, take one more look at everybody. And I want to say, when your ballots come in the mail, please fill them out and return them. This is your election. I may be the election official and the city recorder, but this is your election. And if you don't think your vote counts, I want you to think again. Last time, we had to have a roll of the dice because it was one vote off, and then when we did the recount, it was a tie. And so we had to do what they call draw lots, and we rolled the dice. So just remember, especially when we're this small still, that your vote does count, and I expect to see more votes come in for the general election. So I appreciate everybody coming out. We're going to have time now, about give or take about a half hour for you guys to mingle and mix with your candidates, get to know them a little better, ask questions that you don't feel were asked tonight, and make sure that your, your voice is heard through who you vote for for your candidate, and there will be refreshments served. So thank you all for coming. <laughs>